everybody, Miss Venable here. Today we're going to talk about chemical reactions, and I'm going to do demonstrations for you on the chemical reactions lab. So you need your lab sheet and all of the materials. Um, this lab is about chemical reactions, and so I want to make sure we understand the difference between chemical reactions and physical reactions. Um, physical changes occur when you change the size, shape, or appearance of something, but you don't really change the chemical properties. So ripping the paper in half didn't really change anything about the chemical structure of the paper. But when you make a chemical change, you actually rearrange the atoms. So you have a new substances, new substances formed, and they're going to have new chemical properties. So for starters, please make sure you're wearing your safety equipment, your goggles, your hair is pulled back. And I'm going to show you how to light the Bunsen burner. This is a Bunsen burner. It's plugged into one of the gas outlets. Um, the gas handle is perpendicular, perpendicular, like so, perpendicular, to the nozzle. And when I want to turn on the gas, I change this so that it's parallel. And you can hear the hissing of the gas. So once your gas is on, don't waste any time lighting your Bunsen burner. Hold your lighter to the side and gently pull it up until the flame alights. Now, this has a lot of red and orange in it, and that's not what I want. I want a blue flame. So the nozzle at the bottom here will adjust the amount of gas that's going in, and I think the amount of gas I have is okay. It looks like there's plenty. Um, I can change it, and my flame will get lower. So we can lower our flame a little bit. Good. And I can also change the amount of air that's going into the gas. That's, that's this, this thing here, changes the air. And that's going to affect the color that I see. So if I change this, you see it turns into a nice blue flame. And that's what I want on my nice blue flame. It's still a little bit tall. Uh, the higher the flame, the less concentrated the heat. So let's adjust the quantity of gas that's going in so we get a nice manageable flame. There we go. Okay, the hottest part of the flame is just on the inside in the middle, so that's the part I'm going to use. And the first chemical reaction in our lab is uh, burning of magnesium. And this is magnesium. It kind of comes in a ribbon kind of shape. And all I'm going to do is just take one little piece and use my forceps. And I need an evaporating dish. And I'm going to make some observations about the magnesium for starters. I have to record these observations. And what I see is that the magnesium ribbon is very malleable. It's a metal, so it's bendable. And I can draw it into sort of a wire shape like this. It's ductile. Uh, I notice the color. It's kind of a silvery gray color. And then I'm going to put in the flame, it takes a minute for it to heat up, and it's burning a bright white color. There we go, sorry I lost you. It burned like a bright white color, and I notice now that the product that I have is sort of ashy, and it's now a gray color, so there's Definitely been a color change, and it also gave off a lot of heat. So um, a heat, when heat is given off and there's a color change, those are two pretty good indicators that a chemical reaction has occurred. I want to make sure that I record those as indicators um, on, my, on my data sheet. Uh, the next chemical reaction we're going to do is copper carbonate. And copper carbonate... when you heat it, um, has a decomposition that occurs. It's going gonna, it's gonna to break down, and uh, we're going to see some interesting results. So stay tuned for that. 